All right, so this is the key to the quiz on evaluating functions. The first problem, you're given that your function f of x is this quadratic function, 3x squared minus 5x plus 2. And in part a, you want to find f of 2. So I'm going to, let me first of all go ahead and rewrite this over. f of x is 3x squared minus 5x plus 2. All right, so if you want to find f of 2, remember, to find f of 2, you go to your function f, and wherever you see that variable, wherever you see the variable x, you're going to substitute 2, because that's what x equals. x equals 2 here. So we're going to substitute 2 in both of those spots here. So this becomes, um, so you would say f of 2 is going to, and notice it says show work. So f of 2 will be 3 times 2 squared minus 5 times 2 plus 2. All right, now you got to simplify this, but you also must use the order of operations. So, so make sure you, you in, in this little part here that I'm circling, that you understand there's a multiplication and an exponent. According to the order of operations, I must do exponents first before I multiply. So, so don't say 3 times 2 is 6 and then square that, because that's not correct. 3 is not being squared. The only thing that's being squared is this 2. So 2 times 2 is 4. 2 squared means 2 times 2 is 4. And then 4 times 3 is 12. So this is 12. And then negative 5 times 2 is a negative 10. And then plus 2. Combining like terms, 12 minus 10 is 2. And 2 plus 2 is 4. So f of 2 equals 4. So, so that's how you find f of f, um, a function at, at a particular number. Same thing here, except this time you have a variable expression right here. See, that's a variable expression. This was a number. By the way, when you evaluate a function at a number, like we are here, you're going to end up with a numerical expression, with a number. When you evaluate a function um, at, at a variable expression, you're going to end up with a variable expression. So here's what that's going to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right here. So again, where, where, wherever I have that x, wherever I see x, in this case, I see it twice. I circle those. I'm going to substitute a negative x. So this becomes equal 3 times negative x squared minus 5 times negative x plus 2. So wherever I saw those two variables, I substitute a negative x. And that's what you see here. Using the order of operations again, I have to do exponents first. Notice I have a negative x squared. So remember, a negative x squared means a negative x times itself, right? And a negative times a negative is a positive, and x times x is x squared. So a negative x squared is x squared, is equivalent to x squared. So that becomes 3x squared. A negative 5 times a negative x is a positive 5x, and then plus 2. And so therefore, f of negative s is x is this, is this expression, this variable expression that you see. So 3x squared plus 5x plus 2. So that's the answer. So whenever, whenever you evaluate a function at a variable, you're going to end up with a variable expression. In part c, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the function again. f of x equal 3x squared minus 5x plus 2. So I'm going to go ahead and circle the variable x. So again, these are my variable x's and wherever I see those variables I'm gonna substitute x minus 3. I'm gonna substitute x minus 3. So when I do that I'm gonna get f of x minus 3 is gonna equal, remember wherever we see the variable x substitute x minus 3. So it's gonna be 3 times x minus 3 squared minus 5 times x minus 3 and then plus 2. Using the order of operations I've got to figure out what x minus 3 squared is. So let's go off right here and do that. x minus 3 squared means x minus 3 times itself, right? Using the FOIL method, x times x is x squared. That's the first. The outer, x times a negative 3 is a negative 3x. And remember, whenever you square a binomial, whenever you square a binomial, meaning a binomial times itself, you're going to end up with a trinomial. And also, when using a FOIL method, the outer and the inner are always going to be identical. So x times negative x, a negative 3 is a negative 3x. A negative 3 times x is also a negative 3x. Notice the outer and the inner are identical. 
and then a negative 3 times a negative 3 is a positive 9. Combining like terms, remember I can combine the out and the inner, I get x squared minus 6x plus 9. So what I found here though was only this part here, this x minus 3 squared. But all of this right here is being multiplied by 3. So I've got to say equals 3 times x squared minus 6x plus 9. Now I'm going to go ahead and distribute here. So I get negative 5 times x and negative 5x. Negative 5 times 3 is a positive 15 and then plus 2. And then distributing again, I get 3x squared. A, negative, a positive 3 times a negative 6x is a negative 18x. 3 times 9 is 27 minus 5x plus 15, that's 15 right here, and plus 2. Combining like terms, I get 3x squared. A negative 18x and a negative 5x is a negative 23x. 27 plus 15 plus 2, 27 plus 15 plus 2 is 44. And so there's your answer. So f of x minus 3 is going to be equal to 3x squared minus 23x plus 44. Okay? All right, now number two, you're given a, a function, but that's a finite set of ordered pairs. See here, your function was written as a variable expression. Over here, it's written as a set of ordered pairs. Well, this is a set of ordered pairs, by the way, but that's a finite set of ordered pairs, whereas here, I'm sorry, that's an infinite set of ordered pairs. Because when you graph this, you get an infinite set of points. Whereas over here, you have a finite set. One, two, three, four, five. You only have five points. So, so this problem, by the way, is, is fairly easy. It's an easy problem to deal with. For example, when you look at g of 2, remember g of 2 means what is the y value when x is 2. That's what that means. Same thing here. This means... What is my y value? Remember, f of x means the same thing as y, doesn't it? All right, so what is my y value when x is 2? Well, my y value, my y value when x is 2 is equal to 4. That's what that means. So what's my y value when x is 2? My y value when x is 2 is equal to 4. Same thing here. What is my y value when x is 2? So you got to go to your, to your, um, to your function, and you got to ask yourself, when x is 2, what's my y value? So you got to find the 1. You have to find the 1 where x is 2. And notice x is 2 on this one. So when x is 2, this is your y value. Your y value is 3, so you put 3 as the answer. So f a g of 2 is equal to 3. So when x is 2, when x is 2, my y value is 3. Now in part B, I'm going to go ahead and just rewrite it here. In part B, you're asking what is 2 times g of 5? So i got to figure out what the g of 5 is. So just like we did this one, g of 5 means what is the y value when x is 5? Well, when x is 5, you got to find the one where x is 5, and so this is the one right here. When x is 5, my y value is a negative 2. So g of 5, then, is a negative 2. But that's being multiplied by 2. And so, therefore, 2 times a negative 2 is a negative 4. So negative 4 goes here. So 2 times g of 5 is equal to negative 4. In part c, you're adding g of negative 7 and g of 3. So you're going to find each one individually. So if you look at at g of negative 7, remember g of negative 7 means what is the y value when x is negative 7. So I gotta find the one where x is negative 7, the point where x is negative 7. So that's this one. So here's where x is negative 7, my y value is 2. So g of negative 7 is equal to 2. So 2 goes here. g of negative 7 is equal to 2. I'm gonna add that 2g of negative 3. So same thing. You're going to ask yourself, what is the y value when x is negative 3? So I go up here and I find the one where x is negative 3, the point where x is negative 3. So here's the point where x is negative 3. I look at the y value. 
my y value is 4 when x is negative 3. So that's what this is. This is 4. g of negative 3 equals 4. So that's 4 right here. And then, and then 2 plus 4 is 6. And that's it. So that's how you do that. It's not a, this part's not really difficult. It's a fairly simple process as long as you know that, that the first coordinate's x, the second coordinate's y. First coordinate's x, second coordinate's y. And you use those points to help you with these. Also knowing that g of 2 means what is the y value when x is 2. And so that's where you get that from here. All right, so that's it. So that is the key on the worksheet on evaluating functions.